A special visit. President Trump plans a trip to Bakersfield. Congressman Kevin McCarthy discusses the Roger Stone sentencing. And the most recent information regarding the coronavirus is released. This is 17 News at noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Vanessa Dillon. Well, KGT has confirmed President Donald Trump is set to visit Bakersfield next week. That's according to a White House official who says the president will join leader Kevin McCarthy in Bakersfield Wednesday to speak with farmers in the Central Valley about efforts to improve the supply and delivery of water in our state. Earlier this morning, we reported sources from the California Republican Party and the 21st Congressional District told our sister station, Casey, that President Trump will be in Bakersfield next week. President Trump is also reportedly visiting Los Angeles, Phoenix, and Las Vegas. Well, the fallout continues over the Justice Department's decision to change its sentencing guidelines for Roger Stone, President Trump's longtime ally. House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy attacked Democrats who argue President Trump is interfering in the case and are calling for an investigation. The answer to your question is no, the president is not interfering because if you listen to the Department of Justice, they made the decision before the tweet ever went out. Um, the Attorney General Barr is coming before the committee as well, but there's, there's no issue here. It's just like everything else that the Democrats went to play. They do not have facts. All they have is a mission to impeach, and this is all they continue to drive. House Democrats say Attorney General Barr has agreed to testify next month to discuss what they call the president's improper influence over the Justice Department. In your 17 court watch, a jury continues to deliberate for the fourth day in the murder trial of a man accused of killing his parents back in 2016. 33 year old Derek Connell is charged in the grisly murder of his mother and stepfather, Kim and Christopher Higginbotham, in 2016. The prosecution argues Connell killed both his mom and stepdad after coming home from a night of heavy drinking. The defense says Connell killed his stepfather after finding Higginbotham killed Connell's mother. If Connell is found guilty on two counts of first-degree murder, he faces life in prison without the possibility of parole. Well, the trial date for the woman accused of drowning her infant grandson to, quote, prevent family shame has been pushed back. Beyond Dillon faces three felony charges, including first-degree murder. Court documents state Dillon drowned the baby just after 15-year-old, her 15-year-old daughter gave birth in the bathroom of their southwest Bakersfield home back in November of 2018. Documents say Dillon and her nephew, 33-year-old Baksin Derpal Sin Man, buried the body in the backyard underneath the planter. Man disappeared and hasn't been seen since then. He's wanted as an accessory. Dylan's husband, Jagseer Singh, was also charged as an accessory, but he died by suicide. The trial date for the man charged with the murder of his then-girlfriend's two-year-old son was also pushed back this morning. Back in April of 2018, Caleb Kessinger and his former girlfriend, Aylid Chavez, were arrested and suspected of killing two-year-old Ramon Angel Reyes Chavez. Police believe the pair dumped Ramon's body in the Kern River Canyon, then returned to bury it sometime later. Chavez took a plea deal in the case after leading police to the spot where her son's body was buried. She's expected to testify against Kessinger. Chavez told police she went out for dinner with a friend and left Ramon in Kessinger's care. When she got home, she claims that Ramon had injuries to his face and head and that the baby later died that night. In a separate case, Kessinger faces charges of allegedly stealing from his grandfather and stashing guns in his room for the West Side Crips gang. The man suspected of opening fire on a crowded Greyhound bus last week is due in court today. Law enforcement says 33-year-old Anthony Devante Williams shot six people, leaving a Colombian woman dead. The coroner has identified that woman as 51-year-old Lurvis Elena Vence Jimenez. CHP says it's still not clear what motivated the shooting. Williams will appear in court for a felony arraignment at 3 o'clock this afternoon. 
Surveillance video shows the terrifying moments a man went on a rampage with a machete in 2018. And we want to warn you, this may be hard to watch. In 2018, Robert Rivas hacked his ex-girlfriend and a good Samaritan with a machete inside a Starbucks in southwest Bakersfield. You can see the woman run inside with Rivas coming after her. She, he ch then chases her behind the counter, and the man standing up is Blaine Hodge, who rushes over to help. Both disappear around the corner. Then you see Hodge fall as Rivas slashes him with the machete. Hodge scrambles away, and eventually Rivas stops and leaves the store on his own. Just last month, the jury found Rivas not guilty for attempted murder, but they convicted him for several felonies. He's expected to be sentenced next Wednesday and faces seven years to life in prison. Well, the new $3 million low barrier homeless shelter is well under construction on Golden State Avenue. Two massive tent-like structures are going up. Soon they'll house up to 150 people who've been living on the streets. This is a navigation center, right? So the key is, is navigating people off the streets into this facility and navigating them out to any number of different places that uh, um, will help them get back on their feet. And so uh, you're going to see folks coming in and hopefully leaving uh, onto better pathways in life. I think it, it'll be a, a facility that uh, will be most conducive to the focus on getting these folks some mental health treatment, substance abuse treatment, job training, uh, medical care if they need it. County officials hope to open the shelter by mid-February, but minor construction problems at the site have delayed progress. The shelter should be ready to receive its first tenants by March. Switching gears, let's take a look outside. It is beautiful. We've been talking about it all morning. We're seeing sunny skies for the remainder of this week. Currently, our temperatures in the city, 66 degrees. So although we're seeing those sunny conditions, we're still looking at cooler conditions. 28% humidity levels, calm winds out there for us. And it's only going to get cooler over into those later evening hours. In Tehachapi right now, 57 degrees. 27% humidity levels, calm winds at east-southeast, 10 miles per hour. And then it's just getting chilly overnight, looking at those low 30s. What can we expect for later this weekend? Gorgeous conditions. I'll have all the details coming up in our Pinpoint Weather Forecast. Well, the 53rd World Ag Expo wraps up today in Tulare. It's the largest outdoor ag trade show in the world. If you haven't had the chance to check it out, you still can. The event runs until for this evening, admission at the gate is $15. Local high school students are headed to New York to sing at Carnegie Hall tonight. The North High Chamber Choir is leaving for Los Angeles tonight, where they'll hop a flight to the Big Apple. They'll perform this Sunday. Director of Vocal Music Jack Bertrand says going to Carnegie Hall will be a life-changing experience for these students. The choir was able to afford the trip thanks to donations from the community. And the Frontier High School Choir needs your help to perform just outside our nation's capital. The 30 students will sing their hearts out at Strathmore Hall in Maryland, just 10 miles from the White House. As of now, the group is about $5,000 short of their fundraising goal. To find out how you can help, just head to our website, kgt.com. Well, Cupid's Challenge was a huge success. KGT teamed up with Dewar's in downtown Bakersfield for the annual event. And people showed up all day yesterday to get a box of Dewar's 2s. But there was one special donation from a local kid who stopped by to help out. Um, I wanted to donate to kids who are sick. And I just didn't feel like getting any shoes because you should donate even though, even though you sh don't get anything. Tyndall says he raised $50 from selling popcorn with Boy Scouts. He says he watched our coverage of Cupid's Challenge during 17 News at Sunrise yesterday and told his mom he wanted to help the sick kids in Kern County. His donation and all the money raised yesterday will benefit the Mendeboro Magic Foundation. So this particular event did, uh, benefits our pediatric patient assistance funds, and so all of our medical social workers in California hospitals up and down uh, can go into a family's room when they're uh, having to travel for care and treatment and provide support that that family might need. 
You helped us raise more than $21,000 for local children. That's about $3,000 more than last year. If you didn't make it to Dewar's, you can order mixed or peanut butter chews online through the end of the month with proceeds going to the Mendeboro Magic Foundation. Just go to DewarsCandy.com. Well, still ahead on 17 News at noon, thousands of new cases of the deadly coronavirus reported overnight, why the outbreak only seems to be worsening. Plus, a tragic study shows a correlation between pollution and birth defects. Your 17 Health Watch after the break. Welcome back in your 17 Health Watch. An investigation into pollution and birth defects in South Sudan revealed disturbing results. Birth defects around the oil fields almost tripled between 2015 and 2017. Like little Ping Mayak Gear, who was born with six fingers on each hand, a stunted leg, and a deformed foot. His father said an oil company told him it was a genetic problem. Parents, along with lawmakers and local authorities, accused South Sudan's government for allowing two main oil companies to operate unregulated. They also said the government and oil companies acted to silence anyone who tried to bring the pollution to light. Environmental experts say there's little incentive for multinational companies to do anything because it is easy for them to get away with things in impoverished countries like South Sudan. If there is human exposure, even at minute quantities like down to 10 parts per billion of benzenes and PAHs and such and the polynuclear hydrocarbons, that can cause birth defects, cancers, cardiovascular disease, uh, respiratory ailments and such like that. There's a well-established linkage there. South Sudan's oil minister called links to the pollution and birth defects premature speculation. The World Health Organization and others say exposure to oil and drilling-related chemicals can be harmful to unborn children. Thousands of new cases of the deadly coronavirus were reported overnight in China. And the crisis on the quarantined cruise ship in Japan appears to be worsening. NBC's Molly Hunter reports from Japan. Overnight, the Chinese government reporting more than 14,000 new coronavirus cases in Hubei province. Ground zero for the outbreak that earlier this week had been reporting a drop in new infections. Across China, now more than 1,300 deaths and total cases 60,000. Military personnel delivering supplies to overwhelmed hospitals as the government there puts in place so-called wartime control, which includes mass confinements, food rationing and temperature checks for millions. On the Diamond Princess in Yokohama, Japan, the number of confirmed cases also rising. This morning, 44 new cases, bringing the total to 219 on board, including at least 32 Americans. 75-year-old Gate Quarter from Florida is growing increasingly nervous. This one made me think I, I was in hell. Because all of a sudden you felt like maybe it had peaked and then bam. You know, when you have hope and you lose it for a minute, that, that's a really bad place to be. But on day nine of the quarantine, Jerry and Mark Jorgensen from Utah still remarkably upbeat. All right, here's Jerry and Jerry starting their exercise plan. They started our door. Getting into routines, exercising, taking their temperatures, and it's lunch rolling. on the balcony. 771 people out of 3,700 on board have now been tested, including Mark and Jerry. So you've had one test now? I've had one test, and, and they, they said, if you don't hear from us, it's good news. And I didn't, haven't heard anything. I'm telling you, we're healthy. <laughs> on Friday, some passengers will start disembarking to quarantine facilities on land. The U.S. Embassy is sending American passengers this letter explaining the most medically vulnerable passengers will be first, including older adults with pre-existing health conditions. Passengers on board the Diamond Princess have been on that ship for more than three weeks, and they are tired. They want to get off. Gay Quarter, that 75-year-old who we've been speaking to so much, is really hoping she gets called up to disembark tomorrow. Molly Hunter, NBC News, Yokohama, Japan. Now let's take a look at your weather forecast. It is beautiful out there. Just look at that sunny, clear skies. And we're expecting to see conditions like that well into this weekend. Right now we are still seeing chilly 
ish conditions at a 66 degrees here in the city. 28% humidity levels, calm winds at three miles per hour. Right now, though, something to note, we are seeing those sunny skies, but we're seeing drier than usual conditions. More specifically in the Porterville region is where we're seeing a moderate drought here for us. So it, although we love that uh, sunshine, it'd be nice for us to also have a little bit of rain in the forecast, which hopefully we could potentially see by next Monday. Our radar and satellite looking clear for us today. No, pretty much no cloud coverage, just clear skies out there for us. 66 in the city, 66 in Arvin, 57 Tachapi, and regionally across the board looking at those high 60s, even mid by 65 in Fresno. And as far as our highs today in uh, Fresno go, we're looking at 69 degrees, 57 in Morro Bay, 71 in Los Angeles. Our air quality at a 57 <laughs> AQI moderate, so uh, it's looking pretty uh, moderate for us today and tomorrow. Our rally forecast, northwest winds at 5 miles per hour, looking at those low 70s across the board, even high 40s in those evening hours for us. So gorgeous conditions out there. Mountain forecast too, similar east winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, looking at those even 57 in Stallion Springs, 58 in Tatchby, 68 in Weldon, 65 in Lake Isabella. Our desert forecast east northeast winds at 5 miles per hour. So calm out there for us to 68 degrees in Ridgecrest, pretty much those high 60s across the board. Then it starts to drop in those evening hours in the valley forecast. Beautiful uh, sunny skies for us tomorrow. If you have any big Valentine's Day plans and even the weekends looking great too. So if you're planning a getaway to be perfect in the mountain forecast too, looking at uh, 60 degrees by this Sunday, some slim chances of showers by this Monday, about a 10% chance with a high of 51 degrees. And then we see sunny skies well into next week with breezy conditions, a high of 54 degrees in the Kern Valley forecast, looking at sunny skies into this week and breezy too. And then some slim chances of rain. We're going to continue to monitor it and monitor it. And then we're looking at a high of 61 degrees by Tuesday. Sunny skies Wednesday, a high of 62 degrees. That was the look at your weather forecast. We'll be right back with more news. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back. A majority of Americans say they are overtaxed and do not know how their tax dollars are spent. According to a new survey from Go Banking Rates, nearly 18% of those surveyed feel their tax dollars are spent effectively. 27% do not, but nearly 56% don't know where their tax dollars go. Men and women also agreed that social insurance, like Social Security and Medicare, as well as education, should be the top government spending priorities. But Republicans and Democrats are sharply divided on public assistance programs. Well, you are what you eat, but KFC wants you to wear what you eat. Kentucky Fried Kit Chicken has teamed up with Crocs to make the Kentucky Fried Chicken by Crocs Bucket Clog. The shoe made its debut during New York's Fashion Week. They feature a realistic Kentucky Fried Chicken pattern and a nod to the iconic red striped bucket, along with two removable chicken scented charms that look like fried chicken drumsticks. Interesting. All right, cherry farmers are trying to focus on surviving after a fallout with global tariffs. Cherry growers and processors met with the Cherry Industry Administration Board to discuss their concerns over tariffs and an upcoming referendum to renew the Michigan Cherry Promotion and Development Program. Catherine Halverson was at the meeting and explains what this referendum means. We're losing money. We're not going to be the cherry capital of the world anymore, I'll tell you that. Michigan cherry processors spent around $2 million last year in an effort to support the Dried Cherries Committee petition from unfair trade. In January, the International Trade Commission said they would not place tariffs on Turkish import. Now the Cherry Industry Administration Board and local farmers are doing everything they can to keep up the fight. I think at this point it's direct action. It's individuals reaching out, whether it's to their local state legislators or whether it's to the USDA or the U.S. Uh, trade representatives. While this referendum would preserve the tools they already have to work together and come up with new ideas, they say they would like to see more recognition at the state level. What we need to do is get them more informed. We need to get all of the Michigan lawmakers uh, educated. 
They need to know that this industry matters and that without their help, there is a real risk of our industry um, going by the wayside. Had three years in a row, that would have been very nice, solid crops. Well, <laughs> we haven't had a freeze out or a weather you know, failure. It would actually help our industry, I hate to say it. I lost $150,000 being a cherry farmer last year. How long are you going to do it? You know, you'll never get that recovery back. Lawmakers, you know, we need help. Bottom line is, got to realize we got to have help. Still to come on 17 News at noon, we have CSUB head wrestling coach Manny Rivera in studio. We'll hear all about this weekend's feud on the field event after the break. Welcome back. Joining us, we have CSUB head wrestling coach Manny Rivera here to talk a little bit about feud on the field happening this weekend. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit, you know, for those who might not know much about feud on the field, what's it all about? So uh, we're just putting a little spin on our traditional wrestling, just going outdoors and wrestling on our soccer field. What made, what inspired that idea? Um, you know, we're just always looking to bring a, a little spotlight and some excitement to wrestling, and this is a, a good way to do it. And so this is the second year you've done yeah. it, right? And so what has been something that's really stood out to you and has made it something exciting for you Well, guys? last year was really fun, really exciting. I got great feedback, so said, why not do it again? Absolutely. And so what are those details for people if they want to head out there, cheer you guys on? What do they need to know? Yeah, so uh, wrestling kicks off at noon. Uh, tickets are $10 for adults, $7 for kids. Uh, you know, it's free t-shirts for the first hundred through the door. And uh, we're wrestling the Arizona State, who's currently ranked number five in the country. Wow, so it's a big match for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And then is there any other details that you would want to highlight? I mean, so it's going to be this Sunday. And then uh, what makes it such a big competitor for you guys? Because they're ranked fifth. Yeah, they're a Pac-12 opponent, conference opponent. They're, they're having a great year. So it's a great opportunity as for us to compete against the best in the country and steal some wins from them. Awesome. And then tickets are easy to buy too? Yeah, just go to GoRunners.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so yeah. much for joining us today. Thank you. Okay, we'll be right back, everyone, with more news. Welcome back. Finally, here at 17 News at noon, call your besties and plan to get together because it's Galentine's Day. It became popular because of the NBC comedy series Parks and Recreation. On one 2020 episode, 2010 episode, the main character on the show has a February 13th brunch with gifts for her close female friends and co-workers. She says it's ladies celebrating ladies. The unofficial holiday has been gaining in popularity ever since Thursday. Now, Thursday, some businesses are even offering deals and discounts for the occasion. Here's one. If you use DoorDash to order a pretzel bucket from Auntie Anne's, you get free delivery with the promo code GALENTINE. So grab your BFF and celebrate Galentine's Day today. I totally thought it was the same day as Valentine's Day, but I learned something new. All right, everyone, that's all for us. 17 News at noon is uh, over. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here for 17 News at 5. Seventeen News, your local news leader, continues 24 hours a day on KGET.com and our 17 News app in the spirit of the Golden Empire. 17 News.